I'm John Skinner, and this supplements Chapter 20 in my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. And I'll have links to all of the gear in the description of the video. All right, I'm going to start this video a little way into the trip uh, on a cast where I just focus in on the retrieve speed, which is, hey, it's top speed. I'm skipping this lure on the surface of the water. Uh, the reel looks strange because it's an optical illusion. The video's not going to pick up the speed of that road going around. Look at the cranking hand. That's the thing to look at. And there we go. And the fish exploded on that lure on the surface. Uh, this is false albacore fishing, also known as little tunny. A lot of people just call them albies. Um, they are lightning fast. You cannot outreel these fish. Um, and if you skip that tin across the top of the water, top speed, they've got very keen eyesight, but when you splash it across the surface of the water, they don't get a good enough look at it, and uh, the result can be explosive hookups. And you're going to see a bunch of that in this video, and uh, a little ways into the video, you're going to see a 12-pounder landed, and that is one of the largest ones I've landed or actually it's the largest one I've landed in probably four or five years. Um, that's a, a really good one. As I mentioned, I'll have links to the gear in the video description, but this is a seven and a half foot rod, um, a 4,000 size reel, 20 pound braid. And you know what? You can apply a lot of pressure with this gear and that's what you need to do with these fish. I love seeing that thrashing because that means that fish is in really good condition. All right, that's a minute and 20 minutes, um, yeah, a minute and 20 seconds to land that fish. Um, hey, watch this. This is the very early in the trip. Watch the explosion very close, all the way into the beach. Um, yeah, that's going to happen a couple of times on this video. So this is the beginning of the trip. Uh, I don't quite have all the, the nice lighting yet from the sun. Um, but yep, the, the fish started hitting early, and this was a really excellent trip. All right, this one's only going to take 25 seconds to land, and uh, it really helps these fish if you can get them back in the water quickly. I've seen people spend a lot of time and just letting them run, and, uh, and then the fish can't be revived. But this kind of tackle, even though it doesn't look like heavy tackle, it really it isn't, you can apply a lot of pressure on here. Um, so I use the treble hooks that come on these. Uh, these are number two deadly dicks that I like to throw often for false albacore. I have used singles before. Something I didn't like about the singles was that they penetrated the fish more. I felt like sometimes they caused more damage than the small treble. What I s tend to find with the treble is that one point of the treble hooks the fish very often with these fish. And you know that ends up being a pretty small hook and I don't like to use the pliers. I like to use my fingers to get those hooks off. And uh, the result is a lot of times um, you create like no damage at all. So I feel like this is the best way to um, get those fish back in the water and um, have them take off healthy. Now something that's very important for this kind of fishing is the use of a clear fluorocarbon leader. Uh, I use about, oh, it must be close to three feet, certainly over 30 inches, of 20 pound test Seaguar Blue Label. Uh, these fish, they just have such great eyesight. Anything you can do to um, minimize what they can see in terms of the line. So, uh, and I tie that clear fluoro direct to the lure, uh, no clip or anything like that. And uh, yeah, it really does make a difference with these fish. Okay, and then on the release, you want these things to hit the water with a nice head first thrust right in. Boom. And wow, they're like a rocket. They just take off. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, that one's worth zooming in, and then we'll do it in slow motion. Uh, that's exciting to have one come in that close. So this thing's blowing up time and time again on this. Oh, boy. Y you don't see that very often, that they'll come that shallow. So here it is in slow motion. Yeah, this is cool. Because you don't expect it when you're standing there. Wow, such speed these things have. All right, let's move on to the uh, the 12 pounder. So the guy next to me has hooked the line and he doesn't realize it and he's pulling on it like he thinks he's got a fish. So uh, that will resolve pretty quickly. Give it slack. There you go. Real. So as I said in the beginning, uh, I haven't had one this big in like uh, at least five years. Uh, and I catch a lot. Between 2016 and 2017, I landed 523 of these off the beach. And yeah, I counted them. Um, but yeah, this is uh, an, an oversized one for sure. I'm uh, going to get a nice still picture, put him on the boga, so that he was just a little bit over 12 pounds. And uh, going to move as quick as I can, get this guy back out in the water. He's in good shape. I didn't waste any time, um, and, and off he's going to go, and I'm really happy to see him swim away. Um, yeah, wow, those things are really something else.
And they do get a little bigger than that 12 pounder in the Northeast. Uh, my best is 16.4 pounds, and that's a New York State record. And I've seen uh, a handful of uh, low teen fish. So, hey, that's why you fill the spool with line, because these guys can just go, especially those big ones. So if I had to pick conditions for Albies, uh, you're looking at it. This is perfect. This is like 15 to 20 mile an hour wind uh, onshore, two foot chopper. So nice clean water, just absolutely perfect. All right, I'm going to be quiet now and um, let you enjoy the rest of the action. And if you like these videos, please subscribe.